Now, let's talk Unicorn and let's talk US and SaaS. Um, Domo is one of those high-flying companies, high and fast-flying. And Josh, you were so kind to, to join us very last minute. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, where did you fly in from? Uh, flew in from Utah. Also Utah. Got in this morning seems to be on to Tokyo tonight. You are from Utah? Yeah. Yeah. From Park City or some exciting ski resort or? Just follow Donald Trump around. Okay. <laughs> see what he's doing. See so, what's going on with the country. So Domo is one of those companies where we were not too familiar with, but then when we looked up some of your data, it's truly impressive. I think, how much capital did you raise? We raised almost $600 million. $600 million? Yeah. Which makes you obviously a, a unicorn. And what is Domo? So I had a company called Omniture. Uh, I was, I took it public in 2006. I was the youngest CEO of a public company for all three years of Republic. Started it in college, and from the time it was a little startup to all the way when it was public, and then when we sold it to Adobe for a couple billion, um, the one thing that always frustrated me was I didn't. We were selling data to all our customers, but I didn't have data about my own company. Uh, by the way, I know so much what you're talking about, and that was actually the main reason because we love to become your customer, but continue. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just being able to see, I would go see, uh, at Omniture we did web analytics and online marketing data, and I'd go see Expedia or eBay, and they'd tell me how much money they were making on, my, on our product, and then they would ask me, well, how's your business doing, Josh, and how many employees do you have? And I'm like, I, hey, let me make some calls. Uh, yeah, exactly, let me make some phone calls. And um, now we've got it so that it's all right on your iPhone, you can see, We've connected to over a thousand different systems. We're doing $100 million in revenue. We're growing at 100%. We've got customers like Target, uh, Nike, eBay, um, you know, a thousand different customers, really big and ones. And who uses the product in the organization? Well, that's the thing that's different is this is really a platform to manage your business. So it's, uh, you know, that it kind of comes from the BI world. Yeah. Um, but it's really a way to optimize your business. And so we've got CEOs of Fortune 50 companies using our product, and then the analysts. And it spreads throughout the entire organization. So for instance, I'll get a text message and it says, I'll just be hanging out at home watching TV, I'll get a text message that says, your pipeline just changed by $500,000. I'll click on it and I'll go in there and there's a conversation that happened with six people at the company that said, here's why the pipeline changed. It just slipped a little bit because the lady we were buying from is on maternity, but it still slipped into the next quarter. I'm like, oh, okay. I now know the data. I didn't have to have the meeting because the conversation was right there. And that's just a, you know, that's a, that's that's awesome. a way to manage your business that most executives don't get to have. So it reminds me a little bit of like a cheat sheet for the executives who don't have time to participate or learn all about the single data points in the company. If you're connected to Domo, you will always have the right number for the right situation That's right. on your device. I guess and it's mobile and... It's all, yeah, it's all right on your cell phone. And when you log in, um, it's been fun for our customers because we connect over a thousand different data sources. So no matter That's what data... Thing. So you must be like the master of APIs, right? We're that, I didn't want to be the master of APIs, but we had to become the master of APIs in order to we're make launching, the We're launching the a new work. product around our conference. So we, we are bankers, then nobody really cared about us. Nobody likes bankers. I don't know if you <laughs> have I like bankers. So then we said, okay, let's if do, I'm around let's a banker, usually there's let's money. Do, let's do a conference. People like conferences. Yeah. So we managed that. And now we, have, we want to build a platform called Noah Connect, where we connect service providers like yours with the ecosystem, so we give advice, hey, what is the best product for BI? And, and I think you have a few competitors. I don't think they raise so much money than you. So Well, actually, I can tell you, some, a, I can tell you something funny. Is it a competitive advantage to have so much money raised? Oh, or yeah. Is it a distraction? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I think if we hadn't, because we'd already run one business and built one business, and, and it did really well for our investors. So you were the founder of Omniture? Yeah, I was the founder, of, founder CEO of Omniture, and now founder CEO of this. How so, old are you? I'm 43. Okay. So well, I'm you look much getting younger. up there. I'm getting old. It's, I think it's a close. <laughs> <laughs> Six daughters. So Six getting daughters? Up there. Yeah. I'm old. I'm old in some ways. And is it because you wanted six or you kept on trying until no, there's a non daughter? Trying coming? to have a boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, you continue? But uh, I have a good story for you, though. Yes, please. So we're down at, um, in Austin right now. We have, we have a competitor, Tableau. 
and yes. they kind of do just analytics, and where we they do they do just the visualizations, and we connect the data to all the ETL, and then the visualization, and then be able to collaborate and really truly run your business. And we uh, they had a conference down in Austin right now. We made a video at our last conference, and then their CEO made a mockery of our video. So we said, okay, game on. If you want to play ball, let's play. And uh, so yeah. <laughs> down in Austin right now, they got 13,000 of their customers at a conference. And so across the street, we invited Flo Rida and Snoop Dogg to come in, and we're doing concerts there and peeling off customer after customer after customer. So we've got about 2,000 leads in the last two days. That's been really fun competitive thing that, because uh, I think, you know, you're talking about how to run businesses. That's, and that's funny. A big com that's a big component of it. It's just it's a dog eat dog world, and that's something we're doing right now. Snoop Dogg. Wow. And is MicroStrategy a competitor of yours, or they are too, too less graphical, I think? No, but it's, that, that's a, you asked the question exactly the right way. There's, whether it's MicroStrategy or Tableau or Cognos or business objects, they're all technically in the same space. But we're really like the last mile. We're the ones that actually get it in everyone's hands. So You're like the SMS message. Yeah, you might get it. You might only have like, if, for instance, if one of our customers they started using us, and then they got rid of 800 seats of Tableau. They got rid of all their MicroStrategy, and they finally now have they have 5,000 people in their company that are using our product. Really? Yeah, and they're all getting the data in real time. And how? I mean, how much? We had Noah around 30 people. Um, I would say 10 people should look at data. So we need 10 workstations, I guess, this sure. has, this has term is. Um, what does it cost? For that would be like 25,000 bucks. It's not that Sorry? big deal. Like 25,000 bucks. Per year? Yep. For like 10 people? Yep. Okay. And who has me? And there's, a, and there's, who, a, who, there's who, a free version too, so. There's a free version? Yep. Is it enough for us? We don't know. Who's helping to set this all up? You have like an army of integrators or? Well, we built a thousand different connectors. So whoever is remotely technical on your side that can put in a username and password and maybe get a token from Salesforce, then they can connect all the data and then it just kind of magically works. And Excel files can also be tapped? Yep. Excel, put in some of Dropbox, Google Sheets, to SAP, NetSuite, offline, online. Yeah, it all just gets put together and then now you can share it. You can put um, different security protocol around different data sets so that only certain people see certain things based on role, title, or individual name. Uh, we will so try it out. All right. And how long did you wait after Omnitour to start your new company? About a day. I was very, very, it was a, I woke so up. So you had the idea about the new one before? Yeah, it was in the back of my head. I just kind of put it back there. I try not to think about new businesses when I'm running one because I get distracted too easily, but it was there for sure. And after I sold, um, and then I left, I woke up the next day and no one was calling me, I wasn't getting any emails, I was freaking out. One day. I was irrelevant, like I gotta get another one. <laughs> um, but no, I mean I really like, I like running businesses. It's the, the day that we, the day that we, uh, the day that I left I got 400 emails from my employees at Omniture and said it was the best job that they'd ever had. Oh really? And that was probably the most meaningful thing that's happened to me in my career, so, so you, when I wanted when to do that again. When acquired the company you didn't join that? Adobe acquired the company and I was there for like seven months for a transition, right. but yeah. We sold it. a company called Fotolia to Adobe, which was our first M&A customer. After the bankruptcy of Lehman, we started ah, Noah. Yeah. Um, we like banking, but wrapped the conferences around it. And Noah stands for no assholes here, so we <laughs> tried to make a little fun of us. And um, yeah, so Adobe is, yeah, was also for Fotolia. We sold the company That's three great. times, yeah. literally. Okay, so how important is Europe for you? I mean, obviously you're here, and, and, and we really enjoy hearing that because normally the, the big U.S. stars go to U.S. conferences, so we're very happy to have you. How important is Europe today and for the future? Do you have offices here? Do you need offices? Yeah, we have offices here, um, and we've got uh, we have salespeople here and service managers here, and we have some giant customers here. Uh, so yeah, Europe's important to us. It was important to us at Omniture. And I think, you know, you're, you're, we're kind of in a place now where, I mean, even compared to 15 years ago, 15 years ago, you could kind of make your company in the US, make it as big as you wanted, and then you, you knew you could go around the rest of the globe and you were yeah. going to be successful. I don't think that's the case anymore today. There's more companies in Europe that pop up, and Europe's been able to figure out how much more effectively to grab companies from Scandinavia or Germany or wherever and rapidly deploy them. 
Um, I, China is a much bigger threat than it used to be um, because they have customers who can actually pay for stuff now. I remember I went to see China Airlines one time and I, uh, they said they were so excited about it. I got on the plane, went to see them, and they wanted to sign a big global contract and they could afford $12,000. I was like, what? And you go back five years later and they were paying us $250,000. It's just things have dramatically shifted. So now there's, we have big competitors that created over there. So you have to go global, I think, much earlier too. And Europe, I mean, can you say how much it is of your revenues? I mean, some of the customers are probably Americans, but they have operations here? Or no, we have, we have, we have customers that are substantial customers that are located here. Like, you know, one of the five biggest companies in Europe is headquartered in Europe is one of our customers. So, so what does Domo stand for? Domo is, uh, I'm, I happen to be Mormon and served a mission for the Mormon church when I was 19 in Japan. And for those you remember the Sticks song, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, Domo means thank you. And uh, Omniture was the very first software as a service company. People don't know that, I think it maybe it was Salesforce. We were two years earlier, it just shows you how good Benioff is. But um, Domo means thank you. And software as a service, because of the recurring revenue nature, you have to keep your customers happy. And so one thing that I always tell my service managers is keep going until the customer says thank you. And so that's kind of where the name came from. Okay. So you raised a lot of money. Uh, you have big global, sometimes I think even public competitors. Yeah. Um, there are software giants out there. Uh, you have many investors. I think I, I looked on Crunchbase. I was wow, so, uh, the, the Hall of Fame there. Yep. Um, they all came in at different times and have different interests. How do you balancing your board? And I mean, obviously. You have one big uh, argument on your side. You're a serial entrepreneur, yep. and you had a business in the same space and, and did quite well. But is it difficult to manage everyone's expectations, or people are nicely aligned? Uh, I mean, they're difficult when you screw things up, you know. Okay. And until then, they drink the Kool-Aid and they believe in the, you know, the opportunity. I think the thing that's interesting about this is it is an enormous space. Like this is yes. applicable. We have customers that are paying us several million dollars, and we're literally like 5% penetrated in the organization. So we can get 20, 30 million dollar contracts out of our customers. How um, do you prove them that you create value for them? Well, I think, so one thing, this is applicable to every employee at every single company. I mean, if you have the right data before you make a decision, yeah. the likelihood for you to make the right decision with better economic value yep. is probably higher than well, you're, you you're moving much faster because the data is available in real time. It's connected, it's on your phone, real time, anything you want to know about your business up to the second on your phone and, and you're you getting alerts. Do like ROI analysis for your customers to prove the point that they should pay more or have more workstations? Yeah, and actually one thing, they, they run it because they have the data. We're giving them the data and they put it right there on their phone and they come back to us. And so for, for those of you who know software as a service companies, if you have 110 to 125 percent revenue retention, you know, revenue base minus the customers you lose plus the upsells equals your revenue retention. 110 to 125 percent is really good. 125 percent, 135 percent, it's about as high as it gets. I've heard of 150 percent. We have 230 percent revenue retention. So that shows you it's great for our business, but it also shows you how happy the customers are. They just keep buying more and more and more because they, they see domo, the value. They say domo, domo, domo all the time. They say domo all the time, bro. As so, long as they keep doing that, we're good. So you went public and you did sell to a large company. Yeah. Um, you probably don't want to tell us your, your secret plan, but uh, what do you want to share with us? What's the future of domo? What, how long you want to do it? You have six children. This yeah. Is the I want to do domo. I mean, I, I want to do domo until I'm 70, 80 years old. I like doing this. I structured this one so it's got two classes of stock so I control it. Um, and my investors know that. I mean, the one question my very first VC asked me, he's the guy that funded Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Snapchat and Matt Kohler from Benchmark. He was founding, he was the founder and then the founding investor for most of those guys. And, um, you know, he was asking me, he's like, why, what's, why are you doing this? And it just, I hadn't thought about it, it just kind of came out of my mouth, but it served as a real rallying cry for the investors. And then I told him, I'm like, I want Omniture to look like that cute little thing we did when we were in kindergarten. Let's go make a really, really big one this time. It's very inspiring. So, inspiring you know, we might fail. Also, we may fail, it may be a gigantic explosion, like as part of being an entrepreneur, I don't think that we're more affected than anybody else, but we're just gonna try to work hard, and as long as we keep customers happy, then, you know, good things happen. So what's your view on the U.S. election output? We have been uh, asking that question of every 
I'm well, if you see my Instagram post, as soon as Trump won, I went and I got my automatic rifle and my dad's military jacket you adopt. and my you adopt. and I was like, let's go. <laughs> Make America great again. But I mean the reality is you can't screw it up too bad. That's the way they set it up. Like the only thing you have to worry about with Trump is that he's a psychopath and he's gonna put his finger on the nuke button. That's pretty much what you have to worry about with is him. Other than that, or small worry, you would he say. can't really screw things up. Sorry? Is it a large or a small worry? Yeah, he's uh and what well I, I Judging by the way that he came, and, and I, know, I know a couple of the senators really well that, that are really high-ranking Republicans. We had Republicans. Giuliani in Berlin also. Yeah. He, I think he's going to play the role. I think he's going to play yeah. the role that he needs to play. It was a big bang to get, get shut elected, down. and then afterwards it's like, hey, it's not that bad to be president. And the Republicans, already showed that they'll, they are, the Republicans already showed that if they say the wrong things, that they'll speak out against him. Paul Ryan already did that, so he needs those guys to work with him, so he can't be too crazy. Yeah, it's just funny. In 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 Europe, you get uh, kind of dismissed, and in America, you seem to get elected for some things. You do. We were really surprised, uh, surprised and puzzled. Yeah, a lot of people were surprised. A lot of people were surprised for sure. But there's a lot of people that uh, I I think what it comes down to is there's a lot of people that feel like they lost their jobs to China and Mexico. Yeah. That he's going to try to make sure that if there's steel dumping, he's going to go and call them up, and he's going to get right in their face. And if Putin's doing something, he's going to get in his face and. You know, America's I just like hope that. the guy has Domo on his phone so he can always check the stats for the country. I hope he does too. I don't, we're, we're working our best to make sure that it happens. Josh, thank you so much right. for joining Thanks, us today. Marco. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you.